Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and over there we got Christopher Drave. Hey, people. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. Uh, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You could call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Um, while you're on the website looking up them, you can pop over to YouTube, subscribe to us. We are two away from 50. Yeah, also click that little bell to get notified, so that way you find out every time we post a video. I was about to say you should probably do the whole Hockey Locker commercial. Okay. Anyway. What do you mean we're good? Um... This is that banter that you like having on camera. So I'm giving off it camera, to you. Off oh, camera. Gotcha. Okay. okay. See, I was trying to banter because we like doing that on this show, don't we? Yeah. But yeah, anyway. like us on you uh, like us on Facebook and give us follow, you know, do all the YouTube subscriber stuff. Thank you for watching on YouTube, everybody that does. Also, Let's try to get our watch count our uh, watch time up and our subscriber count up. That's key. Also, thank you to the Knoxville Ice Bear fan that followed us or subscribed to us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So, was it uh, Matt? No. Well, he's an Ice Bear season kicker already. Um, have or just a fan at least. Yeah. Anyway, what up, Matt Harding? <laughs> yeah, what's up, Matt? <laughs> anyway, um, today the Nashville Predators took on the Carolina Hurricanes. Stats. Uh, it, it was one of them games, man. Like shots on goal were uh, 38 28 in favor of Nashville. Face offs, eh, 52% for the Preds. Hurricanes had 48. Yeah. Uh, Predators were one for three on the power play. Carolina was two for three. Penalty minutes for eight apiece. Uh, hits were 17 12 for Carolina. Block shots were 12 8 for Nashville. Giveaways 9 5 for uh, Nashville. Uh, first period shots, uh, Carolina outshot the uh, Preds 10 to 8. Then Nashville outshot Carolina 13 11. Third period, uh, Predators outshot them 17 7. And, uh, Seriously, guys, you need to start playing the whole game, not just one period. All right, Dan, do your thing. All right, so before I get into this, I'm going to take a look at the penalty stats here real quick. Nino Niederreiter at the 515 mark, roughing against UC Soros. Yeah. At the 1938-minute unsportsmanlike conduct for running the goalie, Nino Niederreiter. Wait, he was targeting. Okay, that's why. Okay. All right. Scoring in the first period was Sebastian Aho, his seventh with at the 12:36 uh, mark, um, with an assist from Nikas, his 12th. Um, then we have Vincent Trocek, former uh, Florida Panther, um, with his wealth on the power play at the 16-13 mark, uh, with an assist from former Calgary Flame, Doug Hamilton, and um, one of the stalls, one of the three of them. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, that stall with his name. I honestly like don't know what Jordan stall, stall it is. That is Jordan? Yeah, Jordan Stahl. All right, All right. keep reading, keep reading. All right, at the 448 mark, Stephen Lorenz with his first NHL pro goal. He um, made his way all the way up through Carolina's system at the time, starting with the Florida Everblades in the 2016-2017 season. Congratulations, Stephen Lorenz. Stick taps to you, my friend. Um, I never got to watch you play. Uh, wasn't a fan of the Blades at the time, I think. We were in flux as far as our system goes. Yeah, wasn't our system at the time affiliated with uh, bleh, uh, Norfolk? I was about to say Cincinnati. 
Um, the we were, Falk? but then we went to Norfolk, and Norfolk, yeah, let's not get into that. That's a whole editorial video. Yeah, anyways, keep it going, keep it going. Um, <laughs> assisted by uh, Martinuk and uh, Cedric Paquette. Uh, then in the third, Kelly Yarncroft got on the board with a really nice shot. Uh, his yeah, I was happy to see that because, man, it was hard to watch the first and second. Um, the second period, that's when uh, Steven Lawrence got his goal. Yeah, so that way people following at home know what period we're on. Yeah. All right, so in the third period, that was uh, at the six-minute mark uh, on the power play, uh, also assisted by Cousins, his fifth, and Ekholm, his fourth. Since coming back, uh, Ekholm has four points. Um, make that five. Matias Ekholm had his third goal of the season, his third in very few games. Yeah. Um, with an assist by Fabro, his sixth, and Halla, his fifth. At the 8-17 mark of the third. Then on the power play, Sebastian Ajo got his eighth with an assist by Jordan Stahl, his tenth, and Jacob Slavin, his fifth. On the hey, why is it that Sebastian Ajo tends to play good against the Predators? I've noticed this to be a trend over the last two years. It's one of those... You, you ever look at the style of player that kind of torches Nashville? It's the puck handling, not so much finesse or shoot the puck or, you know, it's the He's puck. good at puck. He's a puck controller. He He's not sloppy with it. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, those guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl, those guys all can uh, burn the Preds religiously. Yes, and they do religiously, and Ajo is one of them. All right, so three stars of the game were Matias. Third star was Matias Akob with a goal and an assist. Second star, Steven Lorenz with his first pro goal, and Sebastian Ajo with two goals. In net was James Reimer, um, former Toronto Maple Leaf. Reimer is really good. Um, he had stopped 36 of 38. All for one on power play shots. So they got one shot on the power play all game, and it went in. Yeah. Um, with the same percentage of nine or point nine four seven. Uh, in that to start for Nashville, like we said, Saros went down. Um, what was kind of being targeted. He did get injured. The extent of his injury at this time is unknown. If I was to speculate, this I'd say concussion. Speculation, I'd say concussion. To be I honest. would say concussion. But that's just speculation. Well, but he took a shoulder to the head. I don't know what else it could have been. Exactly. Um, he stopped us uh, uh, eight of ten with a point eight zero zero save percentage. He only played nineteen minutes, so I can't be too horribly mad. Yeah, I can't be critical of him considering he got hurt, and it wasn't his fault. It was so and the one goal that got scored on Pekka that was kind of as we call a flutter puck. Or it, a fluke? It was one of those pucks that, as goalies, you look at and you go, huh? Where did that come from? So it's a fluke. Yeah, it's it's one of those stumpers. You you don't know how it happened. So... Oh, get well, you see sorrows? Um, also, get well, Ryan Ellis, um, Luke Cunning, and Ryan Johansson. Yeah, uh, Ryan Johansson, I believe he's the one on COVID protocol, right. every, and everybody else is going to be out between two and six weeks. Um, I believe they said two, two to four, two to then four. I think like four to six. I was reading. Four to six for Ellis, yes. Uh, yeah. The referees were uh, Gord Dwyer and ugh, Furman South. Yeah, you don't like Furman South, do you? No, I didn't like him when he was in the AHL. I don't like him now. Um, okay. We have Libor such such. I follow that one, buddy. I'm just gonna sit here and wait. Suchnacek, um, and Tyson Baker. No chicken. Hey, that's not punny. <laughs> ah. And uh, head coach for. Uh, Carolina is Rod Prendamore. No, not the drink brand either. Brand Armor. Get it? 
Um, Where is that name sounding familiar from? Rob Brendamar? Yeah. Captain of the Hurricanes when they won their first cup. Yeah. Um, How often you play for the team, you end up coaching. Um, and head coach for now, for Nashville. Hey, that's Denver. my pick. Scratches for Carolina, Peter Morazic, Jake Gardner, Timo Teravainen. Scratches for Nashville, Yakov Trenin. Uh, Borovesky is day-to-day. Johansson's on COVID protocol. Hey, don't you got a little interesting nugget of info you wanted to tell everybody? All right. An interesting info uh, of uh, Tanner Janot made his NHL debut, so stick raised to you there, kid. Salute you. We had the pleasure of watching him the last two seasons here in Milwaukee. Um, He has played his – he is the 299th player to play for the Nashville Predators. Yeah. And only the second to wear the number 84. Anyone know the answer to who is the other person to play that? To wear that number. He is a current Nashville Predator. Uh, Ellie Tolvin. Wrong. Hey, I took a guess. <laughs> he was an Admiral's captain. Jared Tenard. He's not on the roster. Well, you said he was an Admiral captain, fool. Um, Colton Sissons. Ah. Colton Sissons is the only other Nashville Predator to wear the number 84. Ah. Well, yeah, the minute you said Admiral's cap, then I'm like, eh, Jared Tenard. All righty. <laughs> COVID and who? All right, starting off with COVID, just because COVID. Yeah. Nino Niederreiter. Yeah, just because he uh, possibly took out Sarles for a couple of games. And besides Pekka, who do we got? We start. Casimir Cascasuo. Wait, where's Ingram? Don't ask off camera. Oh, yeah, he's still in that situation. Okay. I keep forgetting about that. You know, out of sight, out of mind. Yes. All right. So with that being said, if he is out, Devin Cooley becomes the uh, taxi squad goalie. Yeah. Are these taxi squad guys playing scrimmages to stay in game shape? Because I can't imagine just practicing with the teams really going to keep you in game shape. Trying to come up with banter. It's intelligent. I know. Um, I, that I air believe, is bad. I believe they are practicing with the team, but they also practice separate from the team at times, too. All right. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping they're at least doing some type of scrimmaging to keep in game shape. Because game shape and practice shape are two different things. You All should right. know that as a former player. All right. Crap list. It is a very short one, but there's Me. only one person on it. Me? Dante Fabro. Oh, yeah, that knucklehead. He made some stupid plays tonight. <laughs> but Fabro, learn from Carrier that you do not want to be a repeat offender on this list. Is Fabro your uh, next target for constant criticism? Because, hey, it did wonders for Carrier. Now he's in Nashville. I am so. Uh, <laughs> I would you like to take pat off. yourself on the back. You're the reason Carrier is in Nashville. Go for it. You know, you want I would to. love to pat myself on the back. You but should. Really, All his your hard work. Is about a fire under. But his hard work, yes, I'm. Hey, I, I walked up to him and said to him to his face what I say on camera. So don't think I don't. Well, dude, pat yourself on the back. Then you can take credit for a fool. You just admitted it. You said it to him. So there you go. But I will say this though. What I say could have just bounced off of him and meant nothing. He's the one that put in the work. True that. Right. So, well, I'm not saying he didn't. I mean, obviously, he put in the work if he improved. So I'm I'm truly happy for him. Now, this is a spot where I wish Grossnick was on waiver. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish we had Grossnick in the pipeline solely because of this issue of sorrows. Hey, when's our next game? 
seeing how we should probably plug that before we hit the home stretch here. Um, I believe it is the Florida Panthers on Thursday. Uh, All right. Time would be about 6 o'clock. I think we're playing there. Okay, okay. So, yeah, you guys can look for us on Thursday, tomorrow, a day oh, off. Nope, we're at Bridgestone. 7 o'clock, puck drop. All righty then. Well, that'll be our next video on Thursday because tomorrow we have an unusual day off. We had a day off yesterday, game today, day off tomorrow, like eight games in a row starting Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> All right. Please don't forget, check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker. Go over to YouTube, subscribe, hit that little bell so you can get notified. Go over to Facebook, like and follow. See y'all Thursday. Later.